Imagine you wake up to an email and it's from Airbnb when you're just a normal person operating a short-term rental and they decide one morning that your Airbnb or short-term rental is now going to be shut down. That's exactly what happened to folks in San Bernardino County. Dive in with me as we talk about this subject today, why short-term rentals are probably not the best route for you. And if you're not prepared for the upcoming recession or the upcoming bans that potentially may or may not happen, tune into this as we're gonna talk about ways to exit that specific short-term rental model. What's up guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Jesse Vasquez. I am a YouTuber, an Instagram guy, a real estate investor, a midterm rental operator, a old guy that skateboards, a person who loves playing guitar. I'm just kidding, I'm not really any of those things. They make me sound way cooler than what I actually am, but I'm glad you're here. Please like and subscribe to my page as this keeps me wanting to create more videos and it helps with the algorithm. Not only that, but we're able to share this information with other people who can potentially benefit in the long run. That's why I make these videos. Okay. So Airbnb had sent an email to folks in San Bernardino and I read a comment from somebody on the internet and it said, this is part of being a short-term rental operator. You just have to deal with the ups and downs. I don't agree to that. Imagine you actually own a brick and mortar business and all of a sudden somebody with the city comes in, slaps a do not operate for the day on your door. If you're like a restaurant owner, how pissed would you be if all of a sudden somebody did that? A lot of Airbnb and short-term rental operators are just dismissing this as like, oh, it's just part of the ups and downs of being an Airbnb operator. No, it's not. Not in any way in any form is that okay to run a business like that so today we're actually going to be talking about airbnb making really dumb moves and why we probably should think about getting outside of airbnb especially if you're in a state or a city that is not regulated keep in mind not regulated i'm going to talk about this so watch this to the end i'm going to talk about regulations and why it's so important to stay in a regulated market so let's talk about why restrictions are actually hitting states and cities and municipalities right now there's just low inventory when it comes to many cities i'm here in california there is not enough rental properties properties, especially in the armpit of California, where I'm actually at, there's not enough rentals to meet the demand of clients or of potential people to rent properties. Thus, if you're renting an Airbnb or you buy an investment property, you're taking away from the average person from being able to rent that actual home. So imagine there's 10,000 properties and 8,000 are rented short-term rentals. The other 2,000, that's leaving us with even more of a shorter supply than we actually have. And those analogies probably weren't the grass, but you get where I'm going with this, right? So there's a lot of restrictions that are happening all across the U.S. Another thing that I've watched happen is that if a city, and it doesn't have to be in an urban market, it could be some middle of nowhere, central of the United States, a shooting that happens in an Airbnb. Well, what happens is all of a sudden the city will now pay attention to Airbnbs. They're now on the scope, on the radar. They're paying attention to what's happening. And city council will actually get together and say, hey, we don't think we should have Airbnbs anymore because these are the problems. And that is a problem because there's a lot of people getting into the Airbnb space that shouldn't be there in the first place. There, If you're not vetting people, if you're not making sure you have security cameras to see who's coming in and out of your property, you probably shouldn't be an Airbnb operator or a short-term rental operator. So there's actually a Senate bill in California. It's called Senate Bill 584. And I urge everybody to go check that out, especially if you're in California. So this is a tax bill that will actually impose tax similar to hotels on short-term rental owners with revenue funding affordable housing projects. In California, we don't have enough affordable housing. I just talked about this a minute ago. There really isn't. I actually went on my own account and looked at rental properties and there's really not a whole lot of rental properties. In fact, the prices of rentals are way higher higher than they were even two years ago when we were dealing with COVID. So they've continued to rise, which could be good for landlords. And on the opposite spectrum, it is not good for people that are looking to rent. So thus is the reason why California is now deciding to potentially pass a law that will add a 15% tax to every single person that runs a short-term rental. Not in just an Airbnb, this is also a Verbo that runs listed on those platforms. So what the city is trying to do is collect those taxes so that they can build affordable housing. I don't know if that's the best way to go about it by taxing people that actually own property because most people that have short-term rentals only have one property, potentially two, and they've worked their asses off just to get that one. What happened to me when I first got my first midterm rental and got my first short-term rental? Like I didn't have a lot of money. In fact, I was like scraping by just to be able to pick up those properties. So I feel like it's really unfortunate. Who is this going to hurt the most? This is going to hurt short-term rental operators because you have TOT taxes in some cities that have TOT taxes. You have this 15% increase. If you run property management software like Hostfully or IGMS, there's a 15% 
percent taxes added on that. So just between the 15% tax from Airbnb, I was running a property management software that's uh, considered professional. They tax you for that too. Again, it's a 15% tax plus the 15% tax that comes from the 584 Senate bill will go towards uh, affordable housing. Those two things alone will, will set you back at 30%. This is not including TOT taxes, this is not including state taxes, this is not, not including the service charge that Airbnb charges. So potentially owners could be looking at 40% plus tax on their short-term rentals. Caveat to this, the folks that are operating short-term rentals now, guest is actually paying that 15% tax. So it's not necessarily coming out of your pocket. But the reason why this is important to think about is because we're already paying quite a bit right now with a lot of short-term rentals, right? The rates are going up. This could potentially drive revenues even lower. This is going to potentially have more hotels that we're going to be competing with, which right now a lot of people still aren't going to hotels. I don't personally like going to hotels. I'd rather stay, you know, with my family in Airbnb, but a lot of people could potentially start migrating back to hotels because those taxes aren't essentially there for the hotel industry, but they will be for the short-term rentals. So it's kind of like California is penalizing folks that are operating short-term rentals. I'm also a co-host. So I actually, I'm not a property management. We're not allowed to say property management, but co-hosting is very similar in a lot of ways where say we take your property that you have, you're the landlord. I would now bring it onto my umbrella of properties and for a fee, 20 to 25%, we would charge the guests to stay at the property. We would handle all the consumables, messaging. Like, so literally the owner doesn't have to do anything other than receive a check at the end of the month. Now, for adding more taxes on top of that, that's going to draw our revenue even lower. So this can potentially be a huge disadvantage for a lot of people that operate as either a short-term rental business themselves or have a co-hosting business like I have. And that can be really, really devastating to not only the owners because they're losing money, but also us as managing these properties are going to have to reduce our revenues, reduce our prices. And that at the end of the day is going to allow the owners to not make as much money. Okay. So if you guys haven't watched this already, I've actually been through short-term rental regulations in the city of Modesto. They actually had a ban. We got these cease and desist letters that came in the mail. Everybody that operated as a short-term rental and I was freaking pissed. And if you guys haven't watched this video, head over to my YouTube channel, which you're on right now and watch the video, how I storm the courthouse specifically and ask these questions about why they're banning short-term rentals. And if you watch that video, there's three things that you take from it. The first one is the city had no idea what they were doing. They did not know how to operate. They did not know what their laws were even going in effect for. And number two, something that happens all over the state all the time. I actually found out that a council member was attached to a hotel that he purchased and is purchasing more hotels in the Central Valley, a huge conflict of interest. Obviously he did not want short-term rentals and actually partitioned to not allow short-term rentals to operate in that market. So that was a huge, huge red flag that happened. So I urge everybody now to really pay attention to what's happening in their markets, especially if the city has no regulations. The cool thing that came out of that actually was that if you watch that video, the city actually asked me to continue to connect with them. So I actually built a relationship with the city and I actually helped them write the laws. And it makes me sound way cooler than what it is, but I just gave them feedback so that they can actually have a certain amount of properties that they'll allow before they'll completely close them out. So they actually came to me and asked questions, probably because I really realized that there was a council member that owned a bunch of hotels and I brought that to their attention. So I've actually dealt with restrictions. They are not fun at all. In fact, they're going to happen all over the U.S. They're continuing to happen. But again, I like to look in regulated markets that actually allow short-term rentals. In fact, TOT taxes aren't a bad thing. TOT taxes actually go to fire, police, any EMS workers. They go to fixing roadways in a lot of spaces. So I do think that these regulations are important. But again, when we're talking about specific regulations to tax all short-term rental operators, I think that's a little extreme. But then on the other side, I do understand that there is a affordable housing issue, but should regular abiding citizens that have just one property pay that? I don't think so. And it's a fine line to walk, like, right? We're, we're having to kind of give and take on this stuff. So, and this is the caveat that I'm going to leave you with again. And if I say caveat one more time, is that my only fancy word that I have? My only fancy word that I have? My only fancy word that I have? My only fancy word. If you're in a space that is not regulated, I would highly encourage you to think about midterm rentals or even just having direct booking for your Airbnb or your short-term rental because what you want to do is capture data from people that are staying. You want to capture their email address, their phone numbers. There's a company called StayFi that it's just like hotels. You know, have you ever stayed in a hotel and all of a sudden it's like, what room number are you in? What's your first name? What's your last name? What's your social security number? What type of blood do you have? Date of birth? How old are you? How much do you weigh? What's the square root of 100? But seriously, you have to think outside the box. As more regulations are coming, it's going to hurt a lot of people. It's going to change the way the market's going. Everybody that operated as a short-term rental is now going to switch over into the medium-term space or mid-term rental space. 
I encourage you to really think about those things now and really have an exit strategy. As I mentioned before, the city that regulated me, if I wasn't operating already as a midterm rental, I could have been like completely wiped out because it was literally a month and some change before they came back and said, okay, you guys can short term rent. We're trying to figure stuff up. And keep in mind, city councils and city, it's not like operating a business. It doesn't run fast. You know how like with the small business owner, we can literally think of an idea today and make it happen today. City councils, government, it doesn't happen like that. It literally takes weeks, months, years even before these things will pass and go into effect. But this is something to think about now. You always want to think about an exit strategy from the first day you're thinking about purchasing a property. Like if I'm buying a property today, what's my rent? Is this property going to be able to cash flow as a long-term rental? That's an exit strategy. Am I going to be able to short-term rent this? Exit strategy. Am I able to mid-term rent this? Exit strategy. Am I able to make this a pad split where there can be five rooms and you know I essentially have more rooms and somebody can still pay the mortgage and make money off it? That's another exit. So you want to think about all those exit strategies. But again, the most important thing is if you're operating now, you're in a city that's not regulated. If you're in California, start thinking of additional ways to bring income. Start thinking about the medium term space. Start thinking about how I mentioned before, how I go after business to business models where I'm actually connecting with these companies and agencies and building relationships with them directly. That's something that as more and more saturation happens, if you're that 1% of people that do that, you're going to be way ahead of everybody else. And if you want to learn how to specifically do that, head over to the link in my bio. I actually have a master class that I'm enrolling in right now where you actually learn how to go after these businesses. I give you my Rolodex of all the companies that I've worked with. And we have over 250 people right now that are kicking ass in this space. And not only that, but we're sharing the information that we get together with everybody in our group. So make sure you head over there, jump into that. We're bringing new people on right now. And I hope to see you there in my mentorship. And again, there's a lot of success happening. If you haven't already, check out my Bigger Pockets episode number 780. That's a really good episode you might want to check out as well. If you haven't yet, please like and subscribe to my page. I'll continue to make more of these videos. I'll continue to educate. And you want to make sure you hit the little bell button to be the first notified once my videos come out. I appreciate you guys. This is kind of the things that are happening right now in California and all over the US. So think ahead, be smart, and we'll see you in the next videos.